Third DJ Glenn Hall of Fame introduces you to our Jerry Flynn Courage Award winner, and that is Ray Ciancellini. Please, please read this story that Mark put together. It is awesome. Andre, but he was born in 1951 in Geneva, New York. He began his boxing career under the tutelage of uh, Billy Joe Carter and Ray Frado. He later joined a stable of boxers, and that is out of Elmira, New York. Um, this guy fought many amateur and pro fighters. He trained at the famous Singer's Gym in downtown Buffalo, but lived at Boys Town. He often acted as a mentor to the trouble you at the facility. This man is amazing. His reputation as a highly regarded middleweight grew with each bout, and his generosity to others did as well. In 1970, at the prestigious Niagara District, New York, Canada Golden Gloves Tournament, Ray was awarded the Hart Award. This honor is awarded to the boxer who demonstrates the most resiliency, tenacity, and determination. His career spanned from 1966 to 1972. Now, Never knocked down. He continues to this day to keep punching. This is important, what this man has done and accomplished with his lovely wife, Patty, by his side and his children. Uh, Ray is the founder of the Second Impact, the educational concussion awareness program aimed at teaching student athletes the repercussions of not addressing concussions properly. New York State Senator Mike Nazzolio worked with Ray on the Concussion Awareness Act, which was recently passed into law. Although Ray has and continues to suffer from the effects of multiple concussions, he is determined to educate others so that they do not suffer his fate. Despite Parkinson's syndrome, tremors, and dementia, Ray, with his tremendous courage, does presentations and seminars at high schools, colleges, and on the radio, all free of charge. He is also the strength and conditioning coach for the Geneva Red Wings. This story, and his story is just about every week on Ray. This one here, I believe, was Finger Lakes Times, appeared this week. Big long article, and I, I, I can share this with you. Xbox of Ray C. Insulini suffering the effects of repeated head injuries to receive courage reward. And it was written by the Finger Lakes Times just a notch behind the Democrat and Chronicle, but uh, great, great newspaper. And uh, I just want to say about Ray, Dave used to say to me, you got to meet this guy. He's a hard worker. He's making a difference in people's lives. And he has with this new law that uh, Mike, uh, Senator Mike Nozzolio has enacted a couple weeks ago. He and his beautiful wife of 31 years, Patty, live in a quiet rural setting of Verrick, New York. Again, he has a beautiful family. I'm learning more and more about this great, outstanding man. Uh, he fought for Ralph Frado. He's very, very proud of that. And he's very humble, as it says, as Mark says in this article. Very humble man, very generous man, great humanitarian, and to make a difference in his life after what he's been through with Second Impact. I think he deserves a big, big hand. And because of the great courage, in and out of the ring, the Rochester Boxing Hall of Fame is honored and humbled to present him with this prestigious award. I like Dave Burks to give a condensed this from Senator Rizzolio. Tony, thank you very much, and uh, I, I am so blessed to be able to, to work with Ray every day at the ballpark, and if, um, it's just, just fantastic. And it, it, is, um, is Alan Greenall here tonight of the Finger Lakes Times? Is Alan, is Alan out here anywhere? Alan, Finger Lakes Times, thank you so much for putting that article on the paper. Fantastic, honoring Ray. Patty Ciccolini, Patty, please stand up, Patty and Anessa and Eddie. Thank you so much for being here. And all the, all the great people from Geneva, New York, that came to support Ray and the baseball team. Geneva, New York, thank you so much. But right now, it is my pleasure, on behalf of Senator Mike Nozzolio, 
who uh, Geneva is in his district. Uh, Mike had a, a certain tragedy in his family this past week, but he wants me to go ahead and pass this State of New York legislative resolution honoring Ray Ciccolini upon the occasion of his designation as recipient of the 2011 Jerry Flynn Courage Award by the Rochester Boxing Hall of Fame. It has all the, the makings right out of Albany. And on behalf of Senator Mike Nazzolio and all of us here tonight, and all of his family and friends here tonight, I present to you the legislative resolution from the state of New York to my dear friend, Ray Ciccolini. are going to come in handy here. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the Boxing Hall of Fame and President Tony Lisciani for presenting me with the prestigious Jerry Flynn Award. I would also like to thank Texas Range and Scout Dave Herbst for nominating me and the Hall of Fame voting committee for selecting me. Uh, Tony Lisciani, I have to say something about him here. He's worked really hard and has made the Rochester Boxing Hall of Fame one of the most renowned in the country, and uh, I think he deserves a big hand for that. Uh, the senator's not here tonight, but I thank this man from the bottom of my heart for working so hard to get past into law something very dear to me, the Concussion Management Awareness Act. Uh, because of his tireless efforts, uh, we will never have to worry about an athlete being mistakenly put into harm's way. Uh, we're so lucky to have him in Albany. Also, I, I want to thank Alan Brignall and Chris Mark Court of the Finger Lakes Times. Uh, they were instrumental in the success of the second impact, and I want to thank them so much. And the Dr. Jason Feinberg, who once in a while, upon request, will help me with um, speaking engagements at the schools. Uh, he, he's been with me pretty much through on occasion. I want to thank him. And uh, a thank you to all my family and friends who came tonight. It means uh, more to me than you'll ever know. Um, it's your support and friendship. Uh, it gets deep through my darkest days, and especially my my wife Patty, um, who has stayed by my side through thick and thin. Um, seclusion. She never never went out and she could have. She stayed right with me. And I'm out of the shell now and thank God for her for that. Um, they put these tabs on here so I can grab them and I'm not doing it. Yeah. I can't begin to tell you how honored and privileged I am to receive the Jerry Flynn Courage Award. Now this award exemplifies all that Jerry Flynn stood for. He made it his mission to address students at many schools about the dangers of smoking. And uh, Jerry battled uh, throat cancer for many years, but even in his last weeks, 
he found the courage to stay focused and deliver his message until he was no longer capable. Um, Jerry Flynn was a true champion. Um, now I'd, uh, to all the boxers up here, it's a real honor to be up here with you. But I, I just want to tell a little story and hopefully I can get through it. Um, it's kind of a favorite of mine. And uh, all fighters have had a fight that they've wanted or been promised or whatever, and it's never materialized. And uh, I had one, uh, I'm going to take you back to uh, 1970. And um, Monsignor Kelleher was a famed promoter in Buffalo, New York. He was also the director of the regional and national Golden Gloves, and I'm sure the, the Buffalo table over there knows that gentleman. He was quite a man to know, a real pillar of that community. And uh, that year he said to me, he said, Ray, uh, I'm predicting you to win the upstate Golden Gloves title in the middleweight bracket. And uh, when he called me in the office, he said to me, uh, you know, being the crafty promoter that he was, he said, we have a young fighter down in the New York district, uh, the uh, New York City Metro Golden Gloves. There were two different, um, two different divisions. The upstate division, which included all of New York State and parts of Canada, Ontario, and Quebec. Then you had the Metro, all of New York City. They were just different, um, different districts. But both were tough, and Mr. Ferrado here will tell you what a tough bracket that was up in Buffalo. And um, huh, he uh, said to me, uh, "You know, you win this title, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna match you up with with the downstate uh, Vito Anaformo. He's another uh, tough Italian kid, and uh, I'm gonna match two champions together. You're both Italian." We have a heavy Italian following up here. We'll put a, we'll fill a few seats in Memorial Lot. Well, um, my mind went away from what I should have been thinking of was the guys in front of me in my own district, and I happened to be thinking of this fighter Anna Fermo, and uh, I got surprised. I underestimated my next opponent, and uh, he was a rangy southpaw, a lefty, uh, real crafty, and he came by way of New Jersey, but he was studying to be a doctor at Cornell University, which put him in our district instead of the New York district, and uh, boy, he pinned my ears back. He uh, gave me a boxing lesson I'll never forget. and. Uh, he had that death left jab in my, in my face all night long. My corner before the fight, they were uh, kind of teasing his corner because he was studying to be a doctor. They were telling him, well, seeing as he's going to be a doctor, he can fix himself up after the fight. Okay, well, I'm the one that went to the fight, went to the hospital after the fight to get stitches in my right eye, not him. So, uh, you never, never judge a book by its cover or count your chickens before they hatch. I learned that the hard way. Uh, the title hopes in a special match with uh, Anna Fermo went down the drain. But now we, ironically now, Vito Anna Fermo also lost his next match, and he was the favorite down there. He lost to a guy by the name of Eddie Gregory, who also later became known as Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Hmm. Now the, the match, match never materialized, and, uh, and the two champs, right? it wasn't going to happen. Um, Anna Fermo went on to be the middleweight champion of the world. And Eddie Gregory went on to be the light heavyweight champion of the world. What are the chances of two world champions out of the same weight bracket in the same state, same year? Uh, I, 
even though I was disappointed about not being the upstate champ, I was so proud to have competed in a class with two world champions. And just as I'm so proud to be standing here tonight, except in a jury, win a Terry Flynn Award. You know, um, through the years, some people have questioned my ability as a boxer to get to the top, but nobody ever questioned my heart, desire, or tenacity. Uh, no arena opponent ever knocked me down, and I refuse to allow dementia to be the first one to do that. Um, today I'm fighting the toughest fight of my life. For years I've been battling dementia, pugilistica, Parkinson's syndrome. And these progressive disorders are the direct result of my not addressing a concussion properly as a young boxer. Uh, because I don't want other athletes to suffer the same fate as me, I, uh, like Jerry Flynn, visit many high schools and colleges as the guest speaker to tell my story and to stress the importance of never hiding a concussion or making the mistakes that I did. I challenged a concussion and I got beat. Um, I'm so humbled to be standing here among this group of champions. And as a young aspiring middleweight in the late 60s, I idolized this man down here, Carmen Basilio. And uh, and I had the honor of being with him on several occasions. In April of the past year, Patty and I went to visit Carmen and Josie to celebrate our birthdays together. During our visit, Josie showed me the trophy room. Huh. I couldn't believe one man could have, could acquire so many honors in a lifetime. It was like a museum. I mean, I was in complete awe. And as we were leaving, Josie took a plaque off a shelf and said, Carmen and I would like you to have this. Um, the award read, the Catholic Youth Organization salutes welterweight champion of the world, Carmen Basilio, outstanding athlete, war veteran, loyal citizen, devout Catholic, a model for American youth. Huh. Of all the trophies in the room, Josie chose to give me the one that best describe the meaning of a real champion, both inside and outside the ring. <laughs> On the days when dementia rears its ugly head, and I'm scheduled for a speaking engagement at one of the schools, I look at Carmen's plaque for the strength and inspiration to get me through the session. Now, because of tonight's honor, I will also be able to look at the Jerry Flynn Award for the courage to keep punching. And with Jerry Flynn working my corner from heaven, and there isn't any fight I can't win. Thank you. Chaz for being here assisting with this. Uh, you see why I love boxing, the great sport of boxing, the camaraderie and 
fraternity. You don't see this in any other sport. These champions we got here tonight, that boxing doesn't get better than this. Big hand for our head table. I say 